In this video, we are going to see how to gather data for a specimen. And first, I have to kind of tell us a little bit about where we are in the application. And I also want to talk about what a specimen is versus what a plant is, at least in my vernacular. So a plant is the scientific definition of a plant. Genus species common and cultivar, where is it native, what's the average height, so on and so forth. For example, there are millions of eastern redbud trees all around the world, and every one of them is called eastern redbud Circus canadensis, where Circus canadensis is the genus and species. So we can take all that information that we can say about all redbuds, and we can put them into a table called plant. Now we can take the information that we can say about a specific redbud, and we can put that into a table called specimen, that is, if we're dealing with a traditional SQL-based database. But here we're dealing with something slightly different. If we take a look at our application, we notice in the plant name I can start typing Eastern, and it's going to autocomplete to a series of plants that have the word Eastern somewhere in the genus, species, or common name. One of these plants is Circus canadensis Eastern Redbud. So this list that you see here, you only see one Circus canadensis Eastern Redbud, and that's because this autocomplete is essentially going against a list of plants. That list of plants comes to us from a JSON data feed that we explored earlier. So you see that each plant has a unique ID, a genus, species, cultivar, and common name. You'll notice that this one is sorted alphabetically by genus. So if you take a look, they're duplicate genus, but there's no duplication from genus, species, and cultivar. Those three together make a plant unique. So the source of our plant data is not exactly from a database in this case, it's from this JSON feed. But let's say, let's say I pick Circus canadensis eastern redbud. Now I've selected that plant and I have a specific latitude and longitude, and I can give it a location like the Cincinnati Zoo and Botanic Gardens like so, and I can give it a description like a, uh, a beautiful specimen redbud, something like that. So you see what I've done is now I've taken this plant and I've associated some specimen data with it. So the specimen data we want to store into a DTO and we want to have some association between that DTO and this original plant record. Uh, initially, we might just use the plant description, but eventually we should use the plant's unique identifier, its primary key, to relate these two. So, take a look at how I have this organized in this quick and dirty entity relationship diagram. I have the plant, uh, essentially, relationship here with the unique identifier, genus, species, in common. I have the specimen here with the specimen ID, latitude and longitude. We could also have location. We could also have description. Note that the crow's feet, if I can zoom up on this a little bit, note that the crow's feet are pointing to the specimen, which indicates that there are multiple specimens for each plant, which is what we would typically see in nature. I mentioned there's the concept of the eastern redbud, but then there are eastern redbud trees all around that you can physically touch. So the eastern redbud trees you can touch are in the specimen concept, where the concept of an eastern redbud as a scientific definition is here in plant. So this, the crow's feet means essentially many specimens belong to this one plant. Little sidebar on this, when I first did the live plant places, uh, I worked with the Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Garden and they said that they wanted a database of plants. I asked them what that database should look like and they essentially described this plant table with genus, species, common, cultivar, and several other details. I watched as they were entering data and I noticed that they entered duplicate plants. So in other words, they had maybe three identical definitions of Eastern Redbud in this plant table. And I told them it was duplicated. They responded, well, yeah, because we have multiple Eastern Redbuds. And then I thought, oh, okay, okay. So we need to make a little difference here between what is a plant and what is a specimen. The genus species common, you only put in one time. The latitude, longitude, description, location, those are things that you would put in that are specimen dependent. So with that information in mind, we can take a look at our project and we see that currently we have a DTO package and the DTO currently only has a class called plant DTO. So that represents that plant entity. We need to make something that represents the specimen as well. So I'm gonna right click on the DTO, choose new Java class, and we're gonna call this one specimen DTO, just like so. 
and choose OK. No special super class or anything like that is required. So specimen DTO, we'll give it some attributes here. We'll say uh, private int specimen ID, so some kind of unique identifier. Private int plant ID, that's essentially a foreign key. So a foreign key means this specimen table will have a reference back to the plant ID, which here I'm calling GUID. That way we'll know which specimens are linked up to which plant. Ideally, we should use this global unique identifier. We should use it like an integer type foreign key because integer math is very easy for a database to do. It's very performant. You don't want to use a string as a key because strings don't tend to be unique. They also take up a lot more memory as opposed to just having a raw number. Uh, so it takes a lot more for a database to know how to fetch and how to store things if they're a string. I am going to cheat a little bit here though. I am going to go ahead and add private string uh, plant name. Uh, I should just pull that up from the plant table, but I'm going to add it as a redundant field here, only because I'm eventually going to store this DTO into Firebase, and it's easy to visualize Circus canadensis eastern redbud than just to see the plant ID. Because I have the plants coming from a JSON feed and the specimens going to Firebase, it's going to be just a little bit easy if I do some intentional redundancy on that plant name, but normally that's not a recommended approach. Okay, next we're going to say private. Uh, now I want to store my latitude and longitude. And it's tempting to make them a double because that's what we're getting back on the on location changed. Uh, there we go. That's what we're getting back on this on location changed method. But the trick with double is we have to consider floating point arithmetic. Essentially think of one third, which is 0 0.3333 continuous but you don't have the option of continuous storage you have a fixed amount of storage so eventually you have to stop doing 0 0.33333 and you don't exactly get one third out of that so that's a short description of what floating uh, that's kind of a more of an analogy of floating point arithmetic but the uh, the lesson learned here is that with floating point arithmetic uh, after the decimal point sometimes the numbers are not quite accurate with GPS, we do want accuracy after the decimal point. So you'll notice that when I was getting this location data, I was uh, immediately converting it to a string. So while the location data latitude and longitude comes to us as a double, I'm going to store it as a string. Uh, so we'll say latitude and private string longitude. And then we'll say private string location and private string description. And with that, we should cover all of the major fields. Oh, it looks like it's gone now, but should cover all of the major fields that we have on that GPS of plan screen. So let's right click and say generate, and we'll say um, getter and setter, and go ahead and select all and choose OK. And now we have a DTO. A little bit of tidying up here because it puts it, it put all those getter and setter methods where my cursor was which was kind of somewhere in the middle here of these uh, uh, of this attribute declaration. So I go ahead and choose save. Now I have a data structure that represents what a specimen is. And the next thing is I need to make, a, uh, make it available for the user to save. So I go to the content GPS of plant screen. Let me remove a few distractions here and zoom up a little bit. And we see we have a save button. The save button is called BTN save. And this content that we see here matches up with our GPS of plant activity. So let's go into the GPS of plant activity and let's make a button click handler for BTN save. I just happen to scroll to a point where I have a button click handler for BTN open. So we can copy this one pretty closely. First, let's make a method. Public void uh, save specimen. Something like that's fine. We can name it whatever we want. Now, I've already implemented Butterknife, which gives me the ability to add this onClick annotation and then simply reference that button by r.id.btn save. And now that makes this the handler for our save button. So now what I need to do is create and populate one of those specimen DTO objects. So specimen DTO, uh, as a matter of fact, I can take a little shortcut here and simply say new specimen DTO and then control alt V which in Android Studio will take a look at what's going on. 
Uh, in this case, I'm doing a constructor call, and it will assign the outcome of that constructor to a variable uh, of the correct type. So you see it's made a variable specimen DTO, and it's given it the type specimen DTO. So we're looking pretty good. So now I'm going to say specimen DTO dot uh, set, let's say set plant name, and I'm going to say ACT plant name dot get, uh, get text dot two string just like so now what is uh what is this act plant name act plant name is this autocomplete that's at the top of our screen that i demonstrated earlier so remember i could start typing in eastern and it auto completes to eastern red button. now we know we also want to get the latitude longitude location and description latitude and longitude let's take a look at that Remember that on location changed method, and we see that we're storing the latitude and longitude in a couple variables here called latitude and longitude. One interesting thing I'm noting is that I am saving them in this class as a double. I converted them to a string to show on screen, but within this class, they're actually doubles. So I'm going to need to do a, a little conversion from the attributes that are double type to the string type that my specimen DTO is expecting. So specimen DTO dot set latitude note that's expecting a string so double dot two string and then we'll pass in that latitude variable notice on the right side the latitude is the primitive type double and there we go do the same thing for longitude specimen dto dot set longitude and then we'll say double dot two string and then we'll pass in the longitude variable uh, just like so now uh, you, you, you you might look at this and say, gosh, I'm doing a whole lot on line 245 and 246. I should really break that into two different lines because if I get an exception on line 245 or 246, I don't know what caused the exception. Was it the set latitude method? Was it the two string method? That's a good point. Uh, I'll leave that up as fielder's choice. So you decide how you want to do it. I put it all in one line just because I kind of know I have some trustworthy data here and I'm willing to take that risk. So the next few things we need to set are specimen DTO, and then we'll say dot set description. And I'll come back and fill this in in just a moment. Specimen DTO dot set location. So location is just free text where we can describe what the location is. Let me run to the top of this file and see if I'm grabbing those with butter knife. So I have location. Uh, I do not have description. I can go ahead and uh, add description in just a moment. So description. This guy right here, and what do we call that? EDT description. I'll copy that value. I'll go to text view, and I'll confirm that that is an edit text, EDT description. Okay, so I'll say edit text, EDT description. Alt enter to import edit text, and then use butter knife's bind view to say r.id. EDT description just like so. So now we have access to EDT description and ACT location. That should put us in pretty good shape. We'll run back down and continue. So uh, set description, I say EDT description dot get text dot two string and set location, I say ACT location dot get text dot two string. We know we're still missing the specimen DTO dot set plant ID, which we really should use instead of that plant name. Hold that thought. Uh, we'll just set this up to take a look at Firebase. In a later video, we can look at actually getting that ID. But nonetheless, at this point, we have a populated specimen DTO, and we have a save button. Let me snap a breakpoint on here, and let's confirm this works as we think it should. And we're now in debug mode. Note the latitude is minus 9.2 something, longitude is 59.1. Plant name, of course, we'll go with our old friend, the Eastern Redbud. Location, we'll say Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Garden. Description, a really nice specimen. Now, if all works well, when I choose save here, we should see this DTO populate. So I choose save, we see my breakpoint hit, we see that I can F8, and I'll mouse up just a bit so we can see the variables here. We see specimen DTO. Right now we haven't put anything in it, so you see description, latitude, longitude uh, is all null. But take a look as I choose F8 over set plant name, and what do we get for the plant name? Circus canadensis eastern redbud. Set latitude, and what do we get in latitude? 
59.12. Set longitude, and what do we get in longitude? Minus 9.23. Set description, and a really nice specimen. Set location, uh, Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Garden. So at this point, we have confirmed we are indeed populating that specimen DTO. Our application still runs as we think, but we know that we're able to take all this data that we're getting from this page and put it into a DTO. The next step is we want to take this DTO and we want it to save it. To, we want to save it to Firebase. I'll cover that in our next video. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you.